Tracy here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And thank you so much for your patience. Those of you watching live, we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but we are good to go. So I hope you're excited to learn about otters today because otters are amazing. I hope you love them too. Now, we would love for you to participate. And there's a couple of different ways that you can. If you are watching this program live, then you can actually text us. And we'll bring that text number for you uh, up for you in just a moment so that way you can text us. Just remember that data rates may apply. And if you do need to ask for permission to text, make sure that you do ask for permission, okay? So the number is right down there. It's 562-286-186. And so all you need to do is send a text and that text will come to us and then I will get to see your questions, your comments, anything that you text in. All right. Now, the other thing you can do is if you're not watching this live or maybe as time passes, you're like, wait a minute. I have questions about otters. All you need to do is send us an email. That email address is also right down there. It's live at lbaop.org. All right, so a couple of different ways to connect with us here in the studio at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Now, we're going to be talking about otters today. What do you know about otters? Hmm, maybe we can look at an otter and try to figure out a little stuff here. Okay, hello, otter friend. So here is an otter friend. What do you notice? What do you see? What's one of the first things that you thought when you saw this picture? I think a lot of people, the first time they see otters, they go, oh, they are so cute. Now, here's the funny thing about otters, though. Even though they're super cute, they have little attitudes. And so, so otters are definitely wild animals. They have lots of attitude. And that's one of the reasons why here at the aquarium, we have to work very closely with our otters. And it is a co-worker type situation. That means we have respect for each other. They're not pets. Um, not at all, because they are wild animals, even though they live here and we are caring for them. So we work together and we want to make sure that, um, that everybody is happy when we are interacting with each other. Now, otters are very interesting animals because they are quite small. They're smaller than us or smaller than me even right now. And I'm not that big, not that tall. Um, and uh, they live in the ocean but they kind of look like an animal that you might find on land, right? Well, here's some things. They are mammals. So they're mammals just like us. One of the things about being a mammal is that you have to stay warm. And so it's really important for otters to stay warm even when they're in ocean waters. Now, just imagine that. If you've ever to been to the beach in California, or you've touched the water, the ocean in California, you may have noticed that water's pretty chilly. Now, otters, sea otters, live off of the coast of California. They also live even in Alaska and Japan and Russia. So these are areas with very cold water, which means that otters have to stay warm. And they stay warm in a couple of different ways. Now, one of the ways that they stay warm is having that beautiful luscious fur that you see this otter taking so good care of. They have tons and tons of fur. Now, this fur is so good that even though right now we look at this otter and we're like, man, that is a wet otter. It's actually not wet at all. Well, the skin isn't at least. So this, the fur is wet but the fur is so tight together. There's so much of the fur, it's almost like a raincoat. It blocks the water out from the skin. So if we were able to see otter skin, it's totally dry. This is why they can stay warm with that great, great fur. Now, if you make an O like this with your hand, an otter's fur can be up to 1 million hairs in that little O. That's really different than us. For us, my whole head, probably has like seven to 10,000. That's it. Not even close to a million. And that's my whole head. So uh, that's really not a lot of hair, right? So these animals have way more hair. 
And again, that's really great because it acts like a raincoat and keeps the water away from their skin. If their skin gets uh, water on it, then they'll start to feel very, very cold. Now that's one of the reasons why otters spend so much time primping and cleaning. They have to make sure that their fur stays in perfect condition to keep them nice and warm. Now that's not the only thing that's keeping them warm because just having fur isn't gonna do it. They also need to make warmth with their body. We're mammals too, so we also make warmth with our bodies too. If you take your hand and you touch your head, it might feel a little bit warm, right? Touch your forehead, awesome. So that's because your body right now is, is kind of helping you stay warm. But in order to have the energy to do that, you have to be able to eat. You need to have uh, enough food that we can make enough heat. And sometimes we can run around and that makes some heat too, right? So otters have to eat enough food to make heat just like us. They also move around a lot and that also gives them a little more heat. So they have to eat a lot of food. If they're living in cold water, it means they have to make a lot of heat with their bodies, which means they have to eat a lot of food. Otters have to eat about 25% of their body weight. Now I know that's kind of hard to think about, but if you think about it this way, if an otter was 100 pounds, which they don't typically get to be that big, but if a sea otter was 100 pounds, it would have to eat 25 pounds of food. That's a lot of food. So otters eat a ton and they eat lots and lots of different things. If you look really carefully there, it's a little crab. So otters eat crabs. Otters also eat, did you see that purple ball earlier? Yeah, that thing, that's an animal called a sea urchin. Sea otters can eat sea urchins. So not only is it crabs and sea urchins, but they can eat clams and mussels and shrimp and a lot of different things that they find on the bottom of the ocean. But if you're an otter living in the ocean, you need to be able to find that food, right? You need to be able to hunt. Now, again, otters are mammals like us. They have to breathe air. Everybody breathe in and breathe out. Okay, so we breathe air and that's very important for us. And it's the same thing with otters. They breathe air too. And that's one of the reasons why you will often see otters. If you're in their space, you'll see otters floating on the surface of the water. It's because that's where the air is and they can breathe. When they swim, they have to hold their breath just like us. So when you put your face in the water, you have to go, <gasps> and then you can put your face in the water. And then to breathe, you have to bring your face out of the water and then breathe air again, right? It's the same thing for sea otters. So a sea otter would have to hold their breath and then they can start swimming. Now, how does an otter swim? If they're going to find food, how do they swim? Maybe we can take a look at some otter swimming. All right, so let's see. Oh, I saw one in the back there. Oh, where did they go? Oh, there they are. How are they swimming? What do they use to swim? Oh, that's a great example there. Okay, so did you notice how they swim? They swim with their flippers, right? So maybe we can take a look at, a, uh, at, at this again and try to see, oh, it popped up. Do you see those back flippers? Yeah, so those back flippers, they move. They move up and down like this and that's what's gonna push them through the water. So when we swim, you might use your feet and you kick like this, right? But a sea otter will often kick at the same time. And for us, we use our arms oftentimes when we swim. But the sea otter doesn't do that, did it? It kind of kept its arms close by. So it's really those back flippers, those back feet that are perfect for pushing them through the water. Now we can see it really well in this picture, right? Take a look at those feet. They almost look like fins or like paddles. And that shape is really, really good at pushing water so they get power for swimming. Now let's look at those little front paws. Those are different. They are little paws. So those little paws are not so great for swimming, right? And we just saw how they swim. Not, not only do they swim on the surface of the water, 
but they also dive in the water and they have to dive in the water to get those tasty little bits of food that we were talking about. Sea urchin, shrimp, clams, crabs, all of those things live on the ocean floor. So an otter has to hold its breath, dive underwater, swim using those back flippers all the way to the bottom, and then they gather up food. They can't really eat down there, just like it would be really hard for us to eat underwater. It's kind of tough for otters to eat underwater too. They have to bring all that food up to the surface. So then if you were gonna go dive underwater and collect food, how many pieces of food do you think you could carry? Well, I have two hands, so I could probably carry two things. Otters have two front paws, so they might be able to carry two things, but they have a secret. They have pockets. Now, I'm not talking about pockets like our pants pockets or pockets even like a kangaroo big pouch pocket. They just have a lot of extra uh, skin right here between their arms and their body. And we actually have uh, Sarah's summer class asking how big are their pockets? So they're not huge. It's not like they can carry tons and tons and tons of food. It's big enough to carry a little bit of food. All right. So those pockets are just skin that kind of go from their arm down to their body. And it's like a flap of skin. It's almost like if you wore a big t-shirt and you can kind of tuck food into your t-shirt. Okay. That's what an otter pocket is like. So when an otter wants to collect food, they will go find the food and they'll collect what they can and they'll stick it in their armpits because that's where their pockets are. So yes, they have armpit pockets and when they eat food, they pull it out of their armpit pocket and then they shove it in their mouth. Just imagine if we did that. I'm pretty glad that I don't stick my pretzels underneath my armpits to walk to another place. So I think it's good that we can carry a pouch instead, but otters can't just carry a pouch around, right? That doesn't work for a sea otter. So instead they have their armpit pockets. Now we actually have a video of an otter that is collecting food in its little pockets. Now we have to watch very, very carefully. And um, this might give us an idea of how big those pockets are too, okay? Are you ready? So we can see an otter trainer right here. Oh, there's another otter trainer right here. And here are a few otters. Now all of these little colorful things here, that's food that we made really colorful and fun to give to the otters so they have something uh, kind of fun to do. All right, so let's take a look and see how otters use their armpit pockets. Okay, so now you can see it's definitely food. That otter doesn't want to use its pockets. It just wants to eat. Oh, here comes another one. I wonder what it's going to do. Let's watch. I don't see it shoving food in its face. Do you see where those little colorful things are going? In its armpits. Look at that. And then when the pockets are full, she's going to take that food to the water. She'll float on her back and that's where she'll eat. So it's pretty amazing how otters have those pockets to help them collect food. So again, they're gonna dive in the water, collect a bunch of food in their pockets, and then they'll float on the surface and eat. Now this is how the otters float and eat. Now we also had a question for, from uh, Sarah's summer class asking, how do sea otters carry rocks while hunting? Well, they carry those rocks in their armpit pockets right? The great place for a rock. And do you know why they carry rocks? So rocks are a really great tool. We use tools too. You may have used something like a hammer or maybe even seen like a screwdriver. Those are a few different tools that we use. We actually can use a lot of different tools, but sea otter's favorite tool is a rock. And rocks are really helpful when you're trying to get something off the ocean floor that sticks really well to the ocean floor. They can use a rock to kind of help them get it off the floor. They can also use a rock when something is a little bit on the pokey side and tough to get into. Or maybe it's a clam that has two shells that are really hard. They can't eat the shells. They eat the little bit on the inside. Okay, so 
So they have to be able to break through the shell. And the other question from Sarah's summer school is how do sea otters eat sea urchins with all the spines? They use that rock tool. So they can use the rock to get it off the ocean floor. But the other thing they can do is when we noticed that the sea otter was floating, right? It was floating on its back. It puts the rock on its chest. It takes something like the sea urchin that has all those spines or like a clam that has hard shells and it hits the, um, the food against the rock and the rock is a hard surface. So eventually that thing will crack open and then the otter can eat the insides. So it's pretty cool how otters not only are amazing where they can use a tool to gather food, but they even use a tool to open up food. Now I have also seen sea otters get through the spines of a sea urchin just with their teeth. It is incredible. Now I do actually have um, part of a skull of a sea otter here. So you can kind of see what those teeth look like. So the skull of a sea otter is the, um, is the skeleton of its head. Okay, so we have a skull too, right? If you touch your head like this, it's kind of hard, right? Those are the bones in our head. This is called our skull. Sea otters have the same thing. This is a model, so this is actually plastic, but this is what they look like. And check out those teeth. Woo boy, look at those teeth. So they have really, really great teeth for chomping up. Now these teeth right here are really big, and those are the teeth that they might be able to use to get through all of those spines. Now here's the thing. If we look carefully, the spines on the top, those are pretty big, right? The spines on the bottom are actually smaller. So if they can use their rock to get the sea urchin off the ocean floor, they could actually use their tooth on the bottom of the urchin in order to crack it open. So they have a couple of different ways to get past all of those spines and get to the inside of the urchin where all the good stuff is for them to eat. Now, uh, so that is a pretty amazing thing that a sea otter can do. Now, here at the aquarium, we actually give them all of their food. So they don't need to go hunting quite as much. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why we like to provide them with fun things. The fun things, like all those colorful uh, shapes of food that we gave them that you saw earlier when they were shoving it in their pockets, um, that is a way that they can... Um, that they can explore a little bit. They have to hunt a little bit for their food and gather it. And they can also uh, do some natural behaviors like foraging. So foraging is finding and gathering food, right? So that allows them to kind of do that sort of thing even though they live here at the aquarium. We also will sometimes give them toys that let them do that natural behavior of pounding a thing to open it up. So let's watch. Oh my goodness. So she actually has a toy that she's pounding against the walls, hoping to get the food out of that toy. So that's another thing that we can do. Now, if you are interested in seeing a few more of the toys that we give our otters, we have some more of those toys there. So again, these toys are important for our otters because it allows them to do things that they typically do out in the ocean. They have to forage, which means they have to find it. And then when they find it, they have to be able to get the food out of it. Now, that was a pretty quick find. I think those little shrimp were easy to get. So now she has to be able to pull the shrimp out of that toy in order to get it. Do you notice she's actually peeling the shell of the shrimp too? That's kind of normal for most otters. Not all of our otters do that. Some of our otters just eat the shells, but <laughs> a lot of our otters don't like the shells. So here she goes foraging again. And these are a few different toys that we have for her. Oh, there she goes banging the thing. Oh, nope. She got bored with that one. Let's see what else she finds. I think she's probably looking for an easy one like that purple one. Oh, she found something. And look, she's actually taking it over to the water. Cool. So you'll see how different some of these toys look. They're different shapes. They feel different. Some are squishy, some are not. So there's lots and lots of different things that we give our otters and it helps them to kind of do the things that they would typically do in the ocean. It also gives them lots of exercise. It makes them think. 
all of these toys, we call it enrichment. And enrichment is really good for everybody. We have enrichment too. Have you ever played with a toy? Or maybe you have watched a program, uh, like a show or something that made you think a little bit. Or maybe you've done art. All of that is enrichment. It helps us, um, it kind of makes us think a little bit. Sometimes it makes us move. And it's the same thing that we give our otters here at the aquarium too. Now, I have another question here. How long can a sea otter hold its breath? Now, I'm actually not 100% sure like how long if it had to hold its breath for a very, very long time, but it's just a few minutes. So, so yeah, sea otters don't hold their breath for a very long time because they don't live in places where they have to hold their breath for a very long time. So I know that I said that their food lives on the bottom of the ocean, but the areas where you're gonna find otters, the ocean is not crazy deep, okay? It's kind of deep. So they have to be able to hold their breath for a couple of minutes in order to get to the ocean floor to gather food. Now, uh, one of my friends here in the studio actually told me that uh, it's documented at hold at five to eight minutes or so for holding their breath. So this is a sea otter. Uh, there are other otters in this world too, but the southern sea otters are the ones that we see here off the state of California, and they're also the ones that we have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. So they can hold their breath up to about five minutes or so. Now, this is a great uh, example of a habitat that sea otters would be found in. What do you notice about this habitat? It is full of life, isn't it? There's fish, including sharks. Did you notice the sea stars on the rocks? There's tons of seaweed. And then on the ocean floor is where you're going to be finding all of the things like shrimp and clams and crabs. And, you know, they often don't just sit out in the open waiting for an otter to find them, right? They often will have ways to camouflage or hide themselves. So an otter has to be able to see through all of that camouflage in order to find the things that they love to eat. Now we said that they eat a lot of things on the ocean floor, but there sure are a lot of fish. Well, sea otters don't really eat fish. Do you know why they don't eat fish? Why do you think a sea otter would choose something like a clam or a sea urchin or a crab over eating a fish? Well, let's look at these fish move. They're pretty good at moving, aren't they? Fish are pretty good swimmers. Not all of them, but many fish are pretty good swimmers. So for an otter to catch a fish, they would have to use a lot of energy. It would be like us having to run and chase down a pizza in order to eat it. Doesn't happen to us too often. So it's much easier for the pizza to just be sitting on the table and we can grab a slice. Same thing for otters. It's much easier for them to dive down into the bottom of the ocean to just get a crab that's sitting on the bottom of the ocean instead of having to chase down a fish. So now we know so much about sea otters, right? We know they have to stay warm and that warmth comes from that nice thick fur that blocks the water and all the food they eat and we even know how they eat food. They even have armpit pockets. They have really cool flippers and paws. Otters are amazing. I hope you think they are amazing too. Now, if you do have more questions, again, we would love to get those questions. All you need to do is email us at live at lbaop.org. Now, we are all done with our class today, but I hope that you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Bye.